just fell over, did you? No, I, huh? I, I didn't see the car. A LUAS officer stood in the middle of the track blocking off traffic. I was scared it would hit him, but realized that LUAS trams would break when they saw him. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, she's up in the generator now, she was. Yeah, she's up now. Don't stand up in the bad one, stand up in the good one. Put your good one. Officers were able to help me into an ambulance, and I went to Mater Hospital. I spent three weeks in Mater Hospital. They helped me with my fracture. As an inpatient. They did many blood tests. They discovered something more life-limiting conditions than a fracture, which to the present day, January 2024 they have allowed to fester and grow so it takes my life. During my three weeks in hospital, from the 1st to the 21st of May 2019, they did some blood tests. One morning of those three weeks in the hospital, they had placed two glasses of what looked like drinking water next to my bed. I sipped one and found it very bitter. I knew it was a medication and not water. I asked what it was because I always needed to know those things. They told me I had high calcium in my blood and this was some kind of phosphorus liquid to neutralize and reduce it. They had no other medication but a liquid to drink. Then they quickly came back and said everything is okay and you don't have to drink it. That raises a question in my mind, as someone who doesn't have medical knowledge. Other patients were over 90 and unable to move. The ward stank and I did not like the physio and social workers who wanted me to run faster and faster when I could hardly take a few steps. The idea was to force me to go to Killarney. The social worker wanted to force me to go there because there was no other accommodation in the country for me. The social worker's assistance and foolishness were not needed. I had a mobile phone and advised Killarney why I had not arrived on the 1st of May. The accommodation did not have lifts, nor did they have rooms available on the ground floor, so I could not go period. There was no trouble between me and the Killarney accommodation staff. I discussed and closed the matter. They would give my accommodation to another person. But a social worker is one of those women who like to get involved. She called that accommodation and reopened the case to take me. If they don't have a suitable vacancy, they cannot be forced. It was the social worker's idea to force me to recover overnight and get into that accommodation. In my life, women have mostly been a source of grief. She said I have to get in there as there is no other place for me in the country. The physio listened to her and the Killarney Accommodation Women staff shouted abuse at me as a result of her forcible contributions. The craven desperation expressed on the phone was not mine. I can compare this to a woman who says I had better prostitute myself, because, due to my poverty, I will otherwise starve, that will not be the only accommodation in the whole country for me, as people are going to understand if I am in hospital. In my opinion, the occupation of a social worker involves a fancy salary with a tiny amount of easy work. It is in my opinion a gift of grace that surely keeps pigeon brains like her off the streets, selling her body. The stupidity of certain occupations is not restricted to certain countries. I have never found mercy, intelligence, or helpfulness in a social worker. An elderly physics professor in the United States said social workers are not bright. Upon admission to the hospital with this fracture, one social worker told me I would not get a comb or toothbrush since patients normally had family bring these things in, and I did not have a family. She said I would have to live in the hospital for six months with no comb and no toothbrush. I got these things through a nurse and by asking another patient who could walk to take my cash and get a comb from the hospital store. I have been repeatedly asked by managers in the accommodation and hospital doctors, to have intimacy with the social worker. If a woman meets that kind of woman and discusses things, all her troubles will go away. She will come up with suggestions directly from her sex brain, the men felt. The suggestion made by a woman will be useful to a woman, they feel.
Perhaps it is the custom of Ireland that every female patient admitted to a hospital has an intimate session with a social worker. The social worker is then, a tollgate when you deposit a coin or have your vehicle turn back like India's holy cow. When you see a holy cow, you are obliged to give it a free meal. A female nurse said in Ireland, social workers have a special importance found nowhere else in the world. The idea that women need to discuss their minds with women for fulfillment is a prevalent attitude in UK and Ireland. I believe if women have no mental faculties in common with men, it means they have no mental faculties. A joke I mean seriously. So why am I antagonizing the medical profession by comments about a social worker, and about women possibly having a low intelligence in the UK and Ireland? I did not purposely blow my chances with doctors in the past and am not doing so in the present. I have truly lost hope that I will get medical help. I have lost hope doctors will ever do anything but tell me I am normal as I deteriorate. I am doing as I think is best. Maybe the consultants will realize the sex magic of social workers fails on me and stop requiring it. I know I can be mistaken about things. I want there to be a God to save me from this hellhole. I pray, which is foolish. Some who pray to get out of a hellhole do die in it. That is God. That is life. On May 21st I got discharged against medical advice. I was still homeless and living in temporary accommodations at the time. Now, I could not climb the stairs and needed accommodations that had lifts, which are typically more expensive than ones where there are only staircases, a long and painful process. I paid and rented my own wheelchair before discharge which they said was not covered by the free services of a medical card. It was however difficult to use, because you need very strong arms to control a wheelchair. Long-term wheelchair users normally have powerful biceps. The wheels rotated spontaneously. I was at risk of veering off onto the road when I used a wheelchair on the pavement, so I didn't have control over whether I would dash into a car. This made it difficult for me to use the wheelchair outdoors. After I was released from the hospital and rented a wheelchair, I also had a walker someone lent me. Part of the time I slept at Merchant's Quay, which is a homeless shelter, and slept with men and women on the floor. The lights stayed on at night, and when I woke up at night and wanted to go to the toilet the male security would grab me and help me to stand up. But soon I was able to stand up on my own with the help of a chair, kept close to my sleeping place on the floor. We had an old curtain or something to sleep on. So boys and gals who slept at the homeless merchants quay wheeled me up and down along the river to the city center O'Connell Bridge and back. Some kids playing in the Smithfield courtyard under the open sky told me I could have litigation. A solicitor in Smithfield took my case. He made me get a doctor report from my doctor for PIAB personal injury and assessment board and I paid 400 for that. The doctor wrote I could develop arthritis in the injured leg after it had healed. Actually, I was born with a right leg stronger than my left leg but now it has about half the strength of my left leg. Four and a half years after the injury, I have developed arthritis or at least a very painful right knee. After several months, the lawyer told me that since the lady who hit me happened to be a barrister, she did not want to pay compensation, which she knew how to evade. He said that her husband was a barrister too, and his law firm had dealings with her husband in the past. My lawyer said he no longer wanted my case, because I would suspect a conflict of interest. It was his choice, and not in my hands as I said he could stay. He also said I was giving the wrong color for the car and so I was disqualified in identifying the lady who hit me because it might not have been the suspected car. It turns out that I had mistaken it for gray or whatever, and this lady made a statement in writing to Garda under oath that she never hit me, just recalls driving past and seeing me sitting on the ground. I got a copy from the guards that she never hit me. My solicitor forwarded my case to another solicitor 
who got the CCTV images from the body cameras of Transdev security men involved in assisting me after the accident. These CCTV videos show that she hit me and was standing over me, calling an ambulance, saying she hit me. I had not the faintest recollection of these happenings, but recalled briefly speaking to an Irish lady in formal dress, who in my testimony walked past me on the pavement. I do not know if this was a fuzzy recollection of the lady, who hit me or someone else. I correctly identified a lone male in the car that hit me, in a black coat, she was wearing a black coat and was tall and slim, but I got her sex wrong. Then this third lawyer who handled my case said I testified I am blind on the videotape. I don't think I would have told them I'm blind, but have always been fully sighted. There is medical evidence I am fully sighted. If you hit a blind person when he or she is crossing the road and no other evidence is available, everybody would assume it's a blind person's fault and they don't need compensation. So this third lawyer suggested that I would definitely lose the case. I told her I didn't want the case in that case. She warned that if I wanted the case back I would have to pay. In July and August 2019, the Garda obtained a written statement from me, and one from the lady who hit me. You are presently looking at these testimonies. I hope my statement to the Garda shows you two things. Firstly, that my English grammar is poor. Secondly, I am of inferior mental status. Even if you did not feel all these things, I hope my testimony gives you a poor impression of me. Actually, the Garda took a handwritten statement from me. Then, they typed it out. What the Garda typed out is different in grammar and content from what I wrote. I was told to keep my mouth tightly shut about racism, by the Garda. I was told I would get into serious trouble if I said the Garda purposely changed my statement to look like the statement of a stupid person from a dislike of foreigners. They said there could have been a mistake transcribing. Well, since there were hardly any non-white Garda, there is no chance the person transcribing my testimony did not know English. I feel they dislike foreigners in Ireland. As a woman, they would like me more if I spoke broken English. They are nice to foreign women of inferior mental status. Perhaps they will not make a payout to any person who is not wealthy and socially well-connected. Being a barrister, she is both wealthy and socially well-connected. Ireland has given me refugee status. They have said clearly that they cannot offer me work due to my age, but have not stopped me from finding work. There is no such thing as a conversation for me in Ireland. I also perceive a type of racial hygiene whereby I cannot speak with a man as long as I live. Women offer kindness all the time. People, both men and women point currency notes and loaves of bread or food packets at my face unsolicited in the LUAS. They seem to have no other facility to express themselves. A social paradise for a beggar or a hooker. Perhaps all these lawyers, including the lady who hit me see me as a beggar or hooker. It would be a laugh if someone became a good Samaritan and made a payout to a beggar or a hooker. Perhaps I would have to be active in a women's organization or be married and have a husband to stand in front of me to get a payout. I hope you also noticed the lady who hit me says in her testimony that I told her, while on the ground after the collision that I already had the injury at the time she saw me. She says she does not think she hit me at all.